Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we are going to discuss the f results of first day of Ukrainian counter-offensive operation in the south of Ukraine, Kherson district. If you remember yesterday we discussed that Ukrainians started this offensive operation and uh, yesterday there were not much information, we didn't know exactly where, if there were any progress from the Ukrainian side. But as I told you, let's wait another 24 hours, or at least a little bit, and I suppose that we would receive more information, and we got a lot of information by this morning of the local time. Now it's uh, 7.30 a.m. in Ukraine, and I suppose that we can do some conclusions, and let's discuss them. And of course we have a lot of maps, a lot of updates from different sources and so on. Now first let's discuss the Russians the Russian sources, their updates, and what do they say about the result of the previous attack. And first of all, we're going to discuss the report of Minister of Defense of Russian Federation. Uh, the Russians are saying that uh, as a result of yesterday's counter-offensive operation, the Ukrainian lost up to 23, up to 26 tanks, up to 23 armored vehicles, two aircraft, Su-25, and more than 50, 560 soldiers. That's a lot, but, but, but. First of all, let's calculate the distance and of the front line. So this is the different distance of the front line. As we know, the Ukrainians were attacking all along the front line. So the front line is 183 kilometers, 183 kilometers. And uh, uh, let's say that uh, 183 kilometers and let's say that the uh, attack configuration is 5 kilometers per 5 BTG, 5 kilometers per 1 BTG. So uh, the Koreans are saying that uh, there were around 15,000 soldiers uh, per, like, let's say, the... Uh, uh, that were involved in this offensive operation, but you need to understand that yes, 15,000 were as those forces who were attacking, but of course, there was like fake attacks, the attacks to pin down the Russians. So, a much more, much, much bigger number of Ukrainians were involved in this attack. So, I suppose that the real number of Ukrainians who were involved in this attack was something around 36,000, only 15 who were active. Uh, who were attacking actively, trying to break through to penetrate the Russians, uh, trying to enter the towns, and another 20,000 who was on the front line, and their main attack idea was recoing combat, tr trying to reach the front line, to do a shot, then to go back, and so on, 36,000. So I must say that 560 soldiers, that not, that not much, it's like uh, 560 soldiers who slid on 36,000, it's less than, it's like... F one more, th one more time. It's like one percent, I suppose. Just one more thing. Yes, it's like or two less than two percent. So that means that it's nothing. It's not a lot. So yes, if we're talking about this number, that's a lot. That's a lot of someone's uh, someone's it's, it's someone's fathers, brothers, and so on. But if we're talking about defensive operation, it's nothing. If we're talking about armored vehicles, 26 tanks, I'm sure that that's a lot, of course, and we know that Ukrainians have lack of tanks, but anyway, uh, 26 um, tanks, 23, 23 armored vehicles, that may be a lot. It's like some kind of one battalion of uh, tanks or armored vehicles the Ukraine lost during this offensive operation. But if you're talking about manpower, it's nothing. It's not number. Uh, as, as I told you, the Ukrainians were good yesterday. If the Russians told that the Ukrainians lost something around two, three thousand, yes, that's a lot. But 560, it's not. It's not a number. It's normal, regular losses that Ukrainians could uh, could have during offensive operation. It's normal. It's everything in the standard. We can say. So this is the uh, numbers from the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. If we are talking about the um, ground situation and so on, uh, the Russians are saying that if we are talking about the south area, that first of all the Ukrainians managed to get Kiselyovka, this town. Uh, the, some sources were saying that uh, the Ukrainians managed to take this town, but later the Russians defeated the Ukrainians and they were pushed back. So as it, as we discussed, the south south southern attacks was some kind of. Uh, fake attack. It, uh, the main idea was to uh, change the Russian focus, artillery focus in this area, and so on. Uh, the Russian, the Ukrainians were trying to attack Blagodatne, 
but they were defeated in this area and they were forced to go back so we can say that everything is fine here the ukrainians achieved significant success in this bridgehead andreev Kolozova, belogorka in this area david brody and so on uh, the russians are saying that uh, they control andreev Kolozova totally no doubt that there is no ukrainians furthermore the ukrainians were trying to cut blagodatovka as we discussed and at least by this morning they established some fire control over this area Area. Furthermore, as we discussed, the Ukrainians got his Suhoi Stavak, this small town. They got this town, but uh, as we, if you take a look at this map, uh, we see that and we understand that this Suhoi Stavak is a very small village and it's very difficult to uh, hold position there. I suppose that Ukrainians left some garrison there, but anyway, uh, by somewhere this night, they decided to leave this town towards more reliable positions because it's uh, the Russians started uh, are shelling this area heavily and the Ukrainians had lost so that's why they decided to retreat so no, but now this town is in the gray zone but Andreev Konlazova is under Ukrainian control furthermore uh, that that means and that confirms that these towns was under Russian control by the yesterday let's say morning and during the yesterday battles uh, the Ukrainians returned this town under their control uh, furthermore now the uh, success that ukrainians achieved is the area between olgin and Vysokopolia, these two towns um, if you remember the ukrainians as i discussed yesterday were tr used um, on the right side on the east side from Vysokopolia and and olgina they used like one but tank battalion and two infantry battalion and if we're talking about the west side from Vysokopolia, they used something around 10 tanks and few campaigns of infantry in this area and the thing is that uh, the ukrainians achieved some success because this success confirmed by the russian sources and the russians are saying that ukrainians managed to get as close as possible to this Vysokopolia. i'm not saying they it's like soft position i'm just showing you the direction of their attack but anyway the russians confirmed that they got into operational encirclement in this Vysokopolia. at least some very famous russian sources confirmed this information they're saying that ukrainians establish establish fire control over the roads that leads to skopolia that the russians are no longer able to leave this town and not being under fire control i'm not saying that it's like there it's like a cauldron no it's not but it's operational encirclement and all roads to this town is already under fire control uh, another thing that the russians confirmed that but ukrainians cannot can't develop their offensive operation because they are under very heavy russian fire under very heavy um, there is this is a very nice defense line in this area and the russians are able to stop the ukrainians were able to stop and now the ukrainians can't develop further steps this is the russians result according to the information furthermore the russians are saying that uh, there are local telegram chats in nikolai in the krivo Rog, and uh, starting um, yesterday evening there were a lot of notice a lot of notes a lot of messages from the local authorities they were asking they were begging the locals to come to hospital and to give their blood because there are so many wounded people in this town so many wounded people so they 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 didn't prepare the most important thing the blood before the blood before the offensive operation so they would try to fix that issue yesterday in the evening another update where we received this morning that ukrainians decided to move the reserves from odessa in direction of nikolaev with one purpose because as i told you yesterday the first day is nothing that we need to see night and we need to see the second the next day if the ukrainians continues their offensive operation that means that they are very serious so as i understand the ukrainians are moving reserves from odessa they are very serious but why do they move reserves not to reinforce the offensive operation but with one purpose to be on the safe side they understand that the russians are able to defeat the ukrainian and to destroy any everything in this area from the ukrainian side and, and on the shoulder of their enemy the russians on the shoulders of ukrainians are able to not even to get into nikolaev they will be able to push ukrainians even in direction to Pirvamaisk, even in direction Krivorok, because you know that uh, scare have a very wide eyes, so that's why the Russians understand that if they are able to defeat the Ukrainians in this area without big losses, they will be able to push the Ukrainians and on their 
uh, on collapsing on the front line, they are able to develop and uh, their ground uh, ex expansion very much. So this is the situation. Now let's talk about the Ukrainians. They also provided their map. It's a military uh, land map. Uh, we I used this map for map of disposition, and uh, this morning they update. This night they updated their information that the Ukrainians managed to take a lot of towns. By the way, a lot of towns. By the way, according to the Ukrainians, according to the Western information, the Ukrainians managed to take Tomna Balka. Pravdinya, Suhoi Stavak, Andreevka, Lazovo, Novodvorovka, Arkhangelska, Petrivka, Zlotai Balka. So, according to the Ukrainians, Ukrainians uh, of information, we see that the Russians' front line has been collapsed and the Russians are running, saving their lives. I'm not saying that it's true, but anyway, uh, two sources, we need to compare them and we need to understand what's going on because, like to say that. Uh, the Ukrainians, we, we shouldn't believe because of ghost, ghost of Kiev and we should believe the Russians and so on. It's, it's, we shouldn't act like this. We need to understand and we need to compare and anyway, sooner or later the truth will come. But for now I see that a lot of grey zones along around this Kherson district and around the front line. So what is these towns? Let's compare the information between two parties. Pravdina, um, Tomina, Balkan. These two towns in the south of Ukraine, the Ukrainians are saying that they took control of them. Uh, this Tomina, Balka and this town Pravdina is this one. According to this map, um, the Western sources map and the Russian sources map, uh, let's take a look at this small town Pravdina. Yeah, pra pra according to the Russians, Pravdina under their control. But anyway. Uh, the Ukrainians are saying that they got control over Pravdino and over Tomino Balka. If we are talking about the Russians, they were saying that the Ukrainians were attacked Kisilovka. This town is located a little bit to the west and northwest from the towns that Ukrainians claim they control over. So that means that Yes, there was something in this area. The Ukrainians were attacking this area, but the Russians are saying that the Ukrainians got Kiselyovka, but then they were pushed back. But the Ukrainians are saying that they didn't even enter Kiselyovka, that they were moving in direction to Minabalka. But so gray zone, a lot of questions and two different opinions, two different opinions, totally different opinions in this area. So we'll see what is going on there, but let's wait a little bit more. Now let's move towards Suhaya Balka. This area, uh, two sources, two maps, all maps, the Russian source, Western source, map of this position, everybody confirms that this bridgehead is under Ukrainian control. As you can see, if you take a look at this map, no, sorry, this map, you see that, yes, this area is uh, like marked as blue color, means that this area is under Russian control, under Ukrainian control, all the Andreevka, Bilogorka, all these towns, every single map confirmed this information, so that means that, yes, that's true, it's true that there was something here, very powerful fist, powerful pressure, powerful attack, and the Ukrainians achieved significant success in this area, and they managed to hold this position and to reinforce this position and and they're now they're on the safe side on the best side in this area now we're talking about this north about Vysokopolia also now the important area and according to the western sources there are very interesting updates first of all according to this map and according to the Ukrainian sources they managed to take Arkhangelska and Novodvorovka this this is most important towns in this area let's take a look at the Russian sources map you're gonna see that they're talking about Vysokopolia and this Arkhangelska just take a look at this town it's a big villages it's a big fortifications and uh, um, the Ukrainians are saying that they took God this town. Yes, the only the, the thing that is the same from both sources is that there was something, and according to the Russians, they managed to establish an um, operational encirclement of Vysokopolia and Olgina, but there were no updates about an Arkhangelska. And to tell the truth, I must say that I don't believe that Ukrainians managed to take Arkhangelska because it's a real fortification. And there were no like uh, reason to believe how can they crack this net because it's very difficult. Very, I don't believe that. It's 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 my opinion. I'm not saying that it's not true. Maybe it's true. Maybe the Russians really drop their weapon and run away. Who knows? But uh, the Ukrainians, as you can see, are saying that they took Arkhangelska and took Novodmitrivka. Let's take a look and let's find this Novodmitrivka on the map of this position. 
on the Western Sources map. Uh, these towns, small town is what Nova Dmitrievka. This is it. Also, I don't believe this, but anyway, there was some information about clashes in Velika Alexandrovka that it was from the Russian sources. The Ukrainians attacked and they were defeated and they returned uh, or like uh, re return or establish like full control over this area. I don't know. So there is some like 50-50. Uh, some sources are lying, some information are lie, but some information is true because there is some uh, the same thing told us, uh, that there is something there that Vysokopolia is under operational circumvent maybe, but uh, the Ukrainians didn't got this down anyway. Oh, at least let's wait a little bit, another few hours, and we're going to, and we're going to receive more updates. And more than that, the Ukrainians also are saying that they took control over Petrivka and Zolotaya Balka. Let's take a look at this town, Zolotaya Balka, this town, and Petrivka, these two areas. Uh, don't have any information about this. The only thing I'm gonna, I'm tell, I'm telling you that this uh, road of attack was the most powerful from the Ukrainian side. I told you yesterday that. There were one tank battalion and two infantry battalion that was involved on the north of this area. So anything might be. So I suppose that they may, could uh, get some success in this area and to take some territory. Who knows? I can't tell you anything about this. But this is also information that Ukrainians are saying that they man managed to move a little bit on the north of Kherson district in direction of Nova Kachovka. So this is situation on this morning. So let's... Uh, Take a, let's keep waiting more. I suppose this evening we're gonna receive more updates about the second day of Ukrainian offensive operation, and we will discuss this in this evening. And that's it for this morning for the first day of Ukrainian offensive operation in the south. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes, join my Patreon, and have a good day. Thank you, bye bye.